Well, over the series, I'm, I, I have decided I'm going to read you some stories. Y'all ready for some stories? Well, I'm going to read you about St. Patrick. Amen. Well, you don't really care because it's not March yet. and St. Patrick's Day is a month away. But I heard God speak to me about this yesterday. And then I started going to all the stuff I have in my library on St. Patrick. I was amazed at how much information I found. Even watched a couple movies on it yesterday. And then, uh, then I looked at my calendar and found out that St. Patrick's Day is probably going to be right about the time that the service hits the television. That's cool. For all those Irish people out there. All right. Uh, I actually have a lot of books on St. Patrick and didn't even know, or a lot of writings by his, on him, and I didn't even know I had them all. This one's called 131 Christians Everyone Should Know, and he's in there. Well, he lived approximately from roughly 410 to about 460, some say 470. It's not really known exactly when he died. He's known for driving snakes out of Ireland. What is another term for snakes? Now, a lot of people say, well, he didn't really drive snakes out of Ireland. But someone writing about snakes back in the 4th century might say he drove the demons out that appeared as snakes. What's less known is that Patrick was a humble missionary uh, with an, of enormous courage. When he evangelized Ireland, he set in motion a series of events and impacted all of Europe. And it all started when he was carried off to slavery, into slavery by Irish raiders in the land of Britain. A 16-year-old, he was a Romanized Briton. Patrick was sold. And that, by the way, Patrick was not his, uh, his birth name. Uh, it was actually given to him by his uh, slave owners. And Patrick means patrician in Latin in Roman and Latin and patrician means to be from the patrician uh, sect of people or a wealthy, uh, the son of a wealthy landowner or wealthy person. So he, they named him Patrick after patrician just saying we captured this patrician over here. So he was a 16 year old Romanized Briton. Patrick was sold to a cruel warrior chief whose opponent's head, heads sat atop sharp poles around his palace in Northern Ireland. While Patrick minded his master's pigs in the nearby hills, he lived like an animal himself, enduring long bouts of hunger, thirst, and isolation as a teenager. And then he began to go back to his Christian past, and he turned to the Christian God uh, that he had forgotten. And he said, he was quoted as saying, I would pray constantly during the daylight hours. The love of God and the fear of him surrounded me more and more, and faith grew. And the Spirit roused me so that in one day I was to say as many as a hundred prayers a day and only at night slightly less. After six years of slavery, he heard a voice speak to him and said, soon you will return to your homeland. He did return to his homeland. And then he heard a voice again. It said, I seem to hear the voice of men who live beside the forest at Fort Clut back in Ireland. And they cried out to me with one voice saying, we appeal to you, holy servant boy, to come and walk among us again. I was deeply moved in heart, and I could, I could think no further of it, so I awoke from the dream. Patrick, what it was believed, but may not have been the first missionary to Ireland, but he came into paganism, and paganism was dominant when he arrived. He said of this also in his writings, I dwell amongst Gentiles, he wrote, in the midst of pagan barbarians who worship idols and unclean things. Patrick's mission faced the most opposition from the Druids, who practiced magic, were skilled in secular learning, and advanced Irish kings with their power. Biographies of the saint are replete with stories of Druids who wished to kill the most holy Patrick. Daily, I, this is what he said, quoted again when he was in his older years, daily I expect murder, fraud, or captivity, Patrick wrote, but I fear none of these things because of the promises of heaven. I have cast myself into the hands of God Almighty, who rules everywhere. Patrick was fully convinced, as the Celts, that the power of the Druids were real, but he brought news of a stronger power. He wrote a prayer called Patrick's Breastplate, a prayer of protection that later on uh, got its current form, but expresses 
perfectly Patrick's confidence in God to protect him from every fierce, merciless force that may come upon his body and soul. And that he was able actually to conceal himself in broad daylight uh, uh, from people trying to kill him. Uh, one biographer from late 1600s described Patrick challenging the Druids to a contest in which each one of them partly tried to outdo the other uh, with their working wonders. And Patrick, uh, the legend says, won as God killed several of the Druids and the soldiers. And then it was written here by this guy's writing in, in 600 AD. The king summoned his consul and said, this is the king who is a... Uh, was put in there by the Druids and was a pagan king. He said this to his consul, it is better for me to believe in this Jesus than to die. And he believed and many others did that day. Uh, so Patrick, he wins the king over. Uh, yet Patrick, the greatest enemy, was one that he was intimately familiar with, was slavery, because he was a slave himself in his early, uh, his young years. And he was one of the earliest Christians to speak out strongly against the practice. Scholars agree that he was the true author of a letter excommunicating the British tyrant uh, that carried off some of his own converts into slavery. And um, ravenous wolves, he said, gulped down the Lord's own flock which was flourishing in Ireland, and the whole church cries out and laments for its sons and its daughters. And so he said, this man was so wicked, it's so horrible and so utter, unutterable, and told him to repent and free the converts. Finally, I'll just read you this. It is historically clear that Patrick was one of the first great missionaries who brought the gospel beyond the boundaries of Roman civilization. According to tradition, only Ireland's inaccessible south remained untouched by his work. Patrick also became a model for later Celtic Christians. He engaged in continuous prayer. He was enraptured by God and loved the sacred scriptures, although he was nearly illiterate. He also had a rich poetic imagination with the openness of God to hear God in dreams and visions and a love of nature. Uh, anyway, what he did changed all of Scotland, England, and eventually all of continental Europe with the gospel. Isn't that good? Wow. Let's all stand. If we have faith, we don't see the domino effect of what we're doing. But what we do now can have a positive impact on future lives and future peoples. Amen? Amen. The just shall live by faith.